Hello everybody, my name is Dratnos and welcome to This Week in Mythic Plus for the week starting on December 24th in the North American servers and December 25th in the EU servers. This week's affixes are Fortified, Bolstering, Grievous, and the Beguiling pattern is Void Heavy. Uh, so Blizzard has sent us this lovely week to remind us to spend time with our families rather than in Mythic Dungeons because these are some rough affixes, uh, especially as Keystone levels get higher, especially if you're not playing like a five Night Elf group so that you can Shadow Meld away the Voids. Uh, that's just, it's a, it's a tough void week. Grievous is, uh, is a hard affix. Bolstering is an affix that slows you down. Void is a hard affix that slows you down. Fortified is generally better than tyrannical, but this week is not, it's not going to be a good one for pushing keys. Uh, it is still going to be a fine week if you're looking to pick up your 15s achievement before the, like before the new season comes out. This is going to be one of the weeks where you can definitely do that. Uh, voids tend to not be so bad. In the like 15-ish range, you can usually deal with them before they get that third cast off if you have good damage in the group. Um, but as you start getting higher than that 15 level, this week will start to be a real pain. So let's start off by going dungeon by dungeon like we always do. Uh, if you're interested in the routes you see on screen, they are my Radar.io weekly routes, the expert version, uh, which you can find over at Radar.io. There'll be a link in the description to this video. Every week I make ba basic and expert routes for every dungeon. The basic routes try to do as few skips as possible. Uh, and the expert routes do a couple more stuff like skips and snapping spots. If you're interested in knowing how snapping works, you can check out my video from a couple weeks ago, a couple days ago, uh, about what is snapping. That might help you understand what's going on with these little X's here. Um, Basically, this week in Taltazar, bad Void Emissaries, especially on the side of Volkal here. We have this awful Void Touched Emissary next to these two reanimated Honor Guards. Nobody in their right mind is going to pull this pack, so you either need to do something really clever to get into Volkal's room, or you're going to need to spend a B-Res and do some kind of death run in there. Uh, if you try and go around the left side, then you're going to have to deal with this Void Touched Emissary here, so that's also annoying. That's also probably going to require a uh, death of at least one person in the group, but probably more. Uh, and then you have this middle... Void void emissary as well. This one you can technically walk by. Like if you want to, if you want to go through the middle of the dungeon, you can technically walk by this void touched emissary with a a good angled jump around either side. Uh, but in practice, the best way to skip this void touched emissary is to just pull this stuff. You know, pu pull the stuff on one side of it and then go around the side and then come down the middle and never actually try and cross through where that void touched emissary is. You just kind of leave it to its own devices uh, and ignore it. That's I think the best way to handle this dungeon. All in all, a pretty tough dungeon for this week because bolstering in general uh, is annoying in the sword pulls. Hard to not bolster Sky Screamers, especially the ones that have Tides Emissaries near them, although that is going to be your best bet. Uh, and Grievous, also rough on the sword pulls and on Volcal, although it's only fortified, so uh, this is probably still killable for you at any level that you can do other keys at. Freehold isn't one of the worst Void Weeks dungeons. There are a couple of awkward voids that you're going to... Like, this one near the start, kind of... If you can't handle pulling 10 enemies onto it, uh, then you have to do something really slow at the start here, you know, something like pulling six mobs and then pulling four mobs with a void. Uh, it's hard to skip here. You could do a death skip, but that's awkward. There are some sneaky ways to skip this void touched emissary with like a warlock gate up here or like druid travel form wild charges up here while these mobs are crowd controlled. Those sorts of things are, are sneaky tactics to avoid fighting this void, but uh, not really good options there. You can pull everything here in Bloodlust. That's, I think, my favorite strategy this week. Just pull the entire first pull of the dungeon and Bloodlust on the Void. Uh, try and kill it before the third cast and try and line casts underneath the stairs. Uh, but that is still sketchy. Uh, and then Grievous active with Eudora. Pretty annoying on this fight. Uh, and there are some further annoying Void-touched emissaries that you're going to have to deal with kind of all over the place here. My route calls for skipping this Void probably with a death. So probably just getting in combat with it, running past it. And then eventually, like, death skipping after killing this stuff uh, and dropping combat that way. Vanishes, Shadow Melds, or Warlock Gateway, I think, even works as well to skip past this. So if you happen to be playing with one of those, that's nice. Otherwise, you can just kill this Void, and but that, that's slow. It's slow and annoying uh, and probably, yeah, not a, not a lot of great options here. A lot of Voids that'll kind of slow you down. This one here, this one here. Uh, so tough, tough combo of affixes. Bolstering, not too bad here. There's only a couple of enemies that really get bolstered onto naturally in this area. Uh, so Iron Tide Crushers are enemies that if you pull with other stuff, they'll get bolstered onto and that will be bad for you. Another annoying thing is that usually these Build Wrap Brine Scales have dramatically less base health uh, than the other enemies in the pack. They have like half as much. So they almost always die first, especially because people are usually targeting them to interrupt them. So on any pull that includes Build Wrap Brine Scales, uh, you should generally wait until they die before chaining into other pulls at least. Uh, and generally don't even combine those pulls all that much anyways. 
Uh, it's usually just going to be faster to... Bullstring week is usually just faster to fight things one pack at a time. Like, you save less time because when when you end up combining pulls, you just end up adding more total health to the pack by when stuff dies to, and bolsters. So uh, pulling slow and steady throughout this dungeon makes a lot of sense. Any of these pulls, except for you can pretty safely combine pulls where every mob in the pull is the exact same health, but it's it's annoying here that these build trap Ryan scales kind of throw that off. King's Rest, a big note this week is that minions of Zul bolster when they die. So be very careful to not get in combat with other stuff and then AoE Dispel Minions Azul. Uh, if you're gonna, you know, you can run down and you can AoE Dispel these things as the first thing you do before getting in combat with these. But if you get in combat with this Guardian, you're gonna bolster it eight times and you're gonna have to wipe to reset the pull. And that is very slow. Uh, this pack of minions as well patrols around. Options for dealing with this are a rogue gets them as they spawn uh, and then vanishes. Or you just pull the first couple packs way back to up here, and then you deal with these minions when they pat around, and you get them without actually uh, having them bolster anything else. But you are going to wipe if you do not plan for bolstering on these minions as well, so that is a really important thing to note. Grievous in here also can be just tough. The boss fights are high damage output, uh, and healing somebody through like a severing axe and Grievous stacks on them uh, just costs a lot of mana and a lot of throughput from your healer that they may not be able to provide, so... Uh, that can absolutely be a, a big challenge in this dungeon this week. Void Week, not so bad in terms of Void Emissaries. Like, this one, you, pro you probably are going to end up just death skipping this one if you can. Uh, and then there are a couple that you're just going to fight. And they're slow, but they're not lethal. Uh, and it's kind of, it's honestly kind of good to have this thing here, because, like, otherwise you're just fighting the stupid Purification Contract all by itself, and that feels really lame also, so... It's honestly not that inefficient to have these Void Touched Emissaries letting you, you know, normally, for instance, in this in this Gauntlet Room, you have to just fight one of these packs all by itself, and even if you wanted to add more enemies to that pool, you couldn't. Uh, but here, you can actually fight them with a Void Touched Emissary, and as long as you're surviving that, it's a little bit more efficient count than you get on a non-Void Week. So I, I'd say King's Dress is actually one of the, the safer, or one of the better Void patterns. Uh, it's still not great, though. I, I'd say the Tides is actually the best pattern in this dungeon, not not even the Enchanted one. Shrine of the Storm, Bolstering. Uh, you do have to watch out for Bolstering on these enemies, the Tide Sage Initiates. That is a pain. They bolster. Droplets do not bolster. Um, these Initiates here do bolster, so that is a another thing you have to be really careful of. And then these Sailors don't bolster. The Abyss Dwellers don't bolster. Uh, these Abyss Dwellers here don't bolster either, and these Abyssal Eels don't bolster. So all of those things, for the most part, Shrine, not too bad with bolstering. Void Week Shrine, we have some very, 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 very problematic voids. So uh, first off, we have this void here, which thwarts the usual skip of like shrouding through and then jumping down and sneaking by the side here. Uh, so instead, my route's going to call for going around this way, which is also sketchy. Uh, you may instead want to execute a death skip, but... Uh, problem with that is that then you're going to want to I want you to execute a death skip here as well. That's because Windspeaker Helda's Void Touched Emissary is also annoying. This Void Touched Emissary is also annoying. So my route for this week, there's a couple of different ways to approach this, but what I've gone with is just suggesting like a nice long way around this way and then a big death skip here uh, and skip all these mini bosses through a death skip. It's sketchy, um, but I think it's the least bad of a couple of bad options in this dungeon. Uh, and it leaves you mostly pulling stuff that doesn't bolster too badly. Like, these packs are annoying, but they're not bolstering problems in the way that, like, this pack is a big bolstering problem and a big void-touched emissary problem. Like, this is just this is just so brutal with bolstering void active. Like, what are you, what are you, what are you supposed to do here? Um, I don't even know what... I, I don't even know how you're supposed to kill this besides, like, having, you know, you, you taunt Windspeaker Heldus away to this part of the platform, and then somebody gets threat on the four initiates and kills them, like, up here, so they don't bolster, and you kill Windspeaker Heldus away from the void, and then you go onto the void and kill it, like, that that seems like maybe the, a way that you're supposed to do this, but I don't know, it's so rough. Void plus, void plus Grievous is really annoying here as well, Void applying Grievous to the whole group, like, you can't really stand and get hit by a second cast of a void safely if anything else is happening, so, um, all in all, just a really you're, you have a really tough challenge to solve with a couple of the void emissaries in shrine if you can do that then you can get through the dungeon but uh they are not easy it's not it's this is not an easy pack to handle and you're going to need a plan for it siege of Paralysis, not too bad with void touched emissaries there is one that's going to thwart your skip towards the end of the dungeon here if, if you are used to skipping this uh so you can kill this first and then skip uh, maybe you got a little bit of less trash from earlier in the dungeon. One pack that I'd recommend removing, uh, if you want to do something like that, is this void pull here. Uh, often not worth doing if you can if you can get your count elsewhere in the dungeon. Uh, Grievous, pretty tough on some of the boss fights here. 
Uh, Hadal does a lot of damage to the whole group, and so that can be a pretty big throughput thing, and Vic Goth also like that, so those two bosses with Grievous active uh, are difficult. But the big thing in Siege of Brawls this week is bolstering. Bolstering plus Ashvane Spotter is kind of, anytime bolstering a is active in Siege, that's what the dungeon is all about. The main strategy that people use to time bolstering keys in Siege of Brawls is bolstering a spotter to be very big, and then using it to kill most of the dungeon. If you're in a key where the level is low enough where you don't need that to time the key, don't do this. Don't try and do this at home. But if you try, if you're trying to push Siege of Brawls keys, and you're like, "Wow, this, you know, this dungeon really sucks. There's all these awful things going on that slow me down in these early pulls. I have to like CC these three enemies and then kill a bunch of footmen far away and then come back into the pull. So like all these pulls are taking twice as much time. How am I supposed to recover the time? The answer is bolster this spotter up or bolster this spotter up and use it to kill the whole dungeon, basically. Um, one problem with that is that it doesn't actually kill every single enemy, so you're going to have to have a plan for dealing with Ashvane command. Yeah, Ashvane commanders, they're normally on their little horses, but here, here's what they look like when they're not on their horses. Um, or the Bildrat Demolishers, these things do not get killed by the Ashvane spotters. So usually the strategy, if you're going to this room, the best strategy I've found is if you have a Druid, they take Mass Entangle, uh, and you want to Mass Entangle everything else and kill the commander first, and then you kill everything else with the Ashvane spotter. That's, I think, the best way to handle uh, big pulls in this room uh, and avoid bolstering a commander five times and having to then kill it very slowly. Uh, so that's the main strategy I'd recommend for this. You can also just have somebody taunt the commander and run far away uh, and, then and then kill the rest of the stuff really quick with spotters and then bring the commander back. That's another strategy that definitely works here. All in all, I would say siege bolstering. It's slow, but definitely doable if you don't bolster the spotter. But if you get to a high enough key level, you're going to need to try and bolster up a spotter. And that is very difficult to execute, but if done properly, very fast. Temple of Sithralis, the main problem this week is actually, it's just Void. If you can get through the Void Emissaries, then you're going to be fine. Uh, but getting through the Void Emissaries sucks because this one thwarts a usual skip that you'll want to do at the start. Like normally groups will just skip all the way down here. Uh, or even if they wanted to pull this pack, they don't want to pull it now that it's got a Void in it. So uh, that is awful. You may have to just start the dungeon with a Death Skip uh, or a Shadow Meld Skip if you are lucky enough to be an Alliance player. Uh, and then this area here is also normally skipped, but this Void thwarts that. So you could like kill this pack and skip the... You could skip this one pack or something, but that's not very effective. Usually they're just this is the most annoying pack that you wanted to skip the most anyways. Uh, and then this void here thwarts this skip that's normally a shroud, so instead you turn it into a death skip if you want to do it. My expert route here is suggesting death skips for many of these voids, but uh, if you're in a, a group that the keystone level is low enough, you might just want to go through and kill every void. The problem when you do that, the problem when you do that, I don't know if I have one of these saved in my MDT, but you end up getting to like 140% enemy forces if you just run in a straight line through the dungeon and don't shroud anything, uh, so that's very slow. But the good news is that most of the rest of the dungeon is pretty easy outside of the awkward pathing that the voids cause. Uh, Galv with Fortified Grievous is still a big challenge, so that's going to be the main thing that uh, makes or breaks the run. Uh, and then, of course, if you mess up any skips or wipe full wipe anywhere, you know, if you have done death skips and then you full wipe, you're done because you can't get back to where you were because there's a bunch of voids in the way, so... Uh, that's not fun and something that can happen to you in Temple this week. Okay, Motherload this week. Void Week is actually one of the better... Motherload is one of the better Void Week dungeons, but everything else is awful. Uh, bolstering is just so rough in this first part of the dungeon. You just are fighting, like, you're fighting one enemy that's got, you know, half a million base health, and then you've got other enemies in there that have two million base health, so four times as much health, and you have other enemies that have one million base health, so you're just fighting all these enemies that it's really hard to do your damage in a good, you know, balanced fashion between all targets and avoid getting huge amounts of bolstering. Uh, these mechanized peacekeepers, it's easy for them to get bolstered onto, or if they die first, they give out two bolstering stacks to everything because the jockey that was inside dies as well and bolsters. Um, so this entire starting area in the mother load is rough this week. My solution for that has been to say, all right, Void is the lesser of two evils here, and the first area is the most evil thing. And so my strategy is actually to pull a bunch of extra stuff this way and this way uh, in the you know second and fourth parts of the dungeon to, to have them be less bad bolstering problems. But if your group is really coordinated, I would suggest still doing mostly the first part of the dungeon and just playing around bolstering to the best of your abilities. But it's not easy. This, this is a very big challenge this week. Uh, if you do want to shroud at the start as well, you're going to need to hug left. 
to avoid this void touched emissary near the mid uh, and this void touched emissary at the very start but you can do that a shroud still works here to get you to this part of the dungeon uh, and yeah you can technically skip all the voids you can skip this void and this void and then the ones up here you can do death skips past because that's that's a normal thing to do in mother load anyways under our void week we get some fun rng whether or not you actually get a void touched emissary down the path that you have to go uh, if you don't get one, just add an extra worm or whatever to the end of the, pe the the route, and that's worms give the same count as void touched emissaries, despite being less health and way easier to kill. So, you know, go figure there. Uh, Grievous problem on most in Kragma the Infested, even on Fortified Tantrum with Grievous can be uh, lethal to your group. So that's something that you're going to want to respect and make sure that you have cooldowns well planned out for. Uh, if you end up having everybody use everything on the first tantrum, you're going to die to the second tantrum. Uh, is generally how this boss fight is going to work. Outside of that, not too bad. Uh, a Void Week dungeon here. There are, like, I have a lot of voids marked on the route, but you can actually skip this one if you want by just pulling this Guardian and then hugging around the side here and pulling an extra Worm. Uh, and you can skip this Void Touch Demissary as well. It means that you don't get access to these nice and easy rots to kill. But if you have a Rogue, you can just actually shroud around this side uh, and then just come into this room this way, and you never have to pull this Void either. So uh, this can be a, a very low Void count, Void Week dungeon, if you want. Um, but... You know, that requires you to do some fancy things to avoid to skip those Void Touch Emissaries. Toldegore, there's a couple of awkward bolstering pulls. The start of the dungeon, you usually have to do a little bit slower. And as you get higher into the prison, there are some annoying bolstering areas. Uh, one thing to note is that when you get to Bobby and Jess Hallis' room, these enemies will not bolster if they're pulled during the boss fight. They'll only bolster if they die, like if you pulled them before you pulled the boss. Uh, so that's something to be aware of. Uh, you may still want to fight them. Like, I don't have them in, in my route here, but... It's a perfectly valid thing to do to pull these if you can open the doors nice and quick. Uh, that's a, a thing that will, you know, they, they give quite a bit of count and they're pretty easy to kill and you're going to have to fight them anyways when you fight the boss. Uh, but they will bolster, which is a drawback of that strategy. Uh, outside of that, not too bad here. You have to be careful with bolstering in the cannon area. Uh, and there are some annoying void touched emissaries that usually you'll want to like CC the enemies near the void and then kill the void first and then kill these enemies with some other stuff with the cannons. Uh, that's a normal strategy for dealing with this area. Grievous, a problem on the first and fourth bosses. Uh, they're just in general are hard bosses, but with Grievous active, uh, they basically get to tyrannical levels of damage output, uh, and that can be a big challenge for your healer. So, you know, watch out for those. Uh, even though it's a fortified week, you, you really need to respect those bosses. Finally, Waycrest Manor. Waycrest, not too bad with bolstering. Uh, maggots no longer bolster when they die. They haven't for a couple months now, and that's been really nice. That's made it a lot easier to deal with. Hounds are still a problem. Um... The way I'd probably deal with Hounds is I would pull all, like, 11 of them and CC this Thorn Shaper uh, and then go kill the Hounds back in whichever hallway I came from. Uh, that's usually the best way to handle them nice and quick and avoid actually bolstering onto something. Uh, but you do have to be careful because if you end up bolstering this thing 11 times, you're going to die. So uh, try not to do that. Uh, and then there are a lot of voids that you're going to have to pull. Depending on which door you have open, you may be able to skip more or less of them, but... Uh, there are voids kind of all over the place here. Uh, the one void that's downstairs, there's one on the kitchen side. So if you want to skip a void going downstairs, uh, you'll come. You want to come through the other side, the left side of the room. Grievous fortified here, also a challenge. Um, Grievous on Heartsbane Triad can be really annoying, especially when you're fighting Selena and you have the aura that makes it so you can't heal very effectively. Uh, Grievous is still doing full damage, so that can be really tough. You need to make sure everybody's topped as you transition from Briar to Selena. Uh, otherwise, you're going to be low on health with high Grievous stacks, and your healer can't do any healing to anybody, uh, and that can quickly become a wipe. So this boss is still very hard. The other boss is not too bad with Grievous, um, as long as your tank can live on Lord and Lady Waycrest, should be okay. Uh, and then bolstering, not too bad in most of the other places of the dungeon either. Uh, you just got to be careful to make sure you don't accidentally pull something as the pack is about to die, uh, because many of these enemies will be pretty lethal if they do get a couple stacks on them. Thanks for watching this episode of This Week in Mythic Plus. Hope this helped you uh, and prepared you for your keys this week. Let me know in the comments uh, if there's something I missed about any of the dungeons or any of your experience differs from mine in how the keys have worked uh, or just whatever. Remember to like and subscribe if you did enjoy the video and check out my stream, twitch.tv slash Thanks everybody. Happy holidays uh, and see you in the next one. Bye.